When I tell you to put that thing on them, put that and thing on them. And there you go with that thing, dude. We talked about so many things. What thing are you even talking the about? The thing, the, 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 the flip floppity thing. thing. You know, the police follow the, the flip floppity thing. That's what I was trying to do. Yeah, you're screaming. Okay. In my head, like right now, you're screaming. Okay. okay, sorry. But when I tell you to sick him, you should have sicked him. Sick him. Hello and welcome to the Kayfabe is Dead podcast, episode 23. I am your host, the voice of the youth, Christian. How are you guys doing today? I am not too bad myself. The Maharaja, Maharaja, Maharaji, the Maharaja, the Maharaja, it's definitely Maharaja. The Maharaja is well and alive today. Is that Jinder Mahal or is that like... I don't know. Anyways, let's not dive too deep into it. How you guys doing today? Um, we're here to talk some WWE as always, some wrestling as always, and truthfully, not too much, you know, wrestling news going around. I, I, I last episode I did was literally a few days ago, so that kind of makes sense in all reality. But um, uh, today I'm gonna be talking Monday Night Raw, SmackDown Live. And I'm going to give, I've done it before, I've done a segment which I called You Just Made the List. And I have another one today, and in the bright lights of Jinder Mahal winning, a guy that we think, I, I think we all expected him never to win a WWE title, a, a world title at least. And in, in honor of that, I have my nine people who I think should Basically, should should win an, a, a a WWE title that you know hasn't, or in this case, ha- who we don't think will have it again, or WWE, you know they they don't make it seem like they're gonna have it again or have it in at all in any type of manner. If that makes sense, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it later. But if you want to hear that, that's gonna be toward the ending of the podcast. It's probably gonna be a quick one today, to be honest. Monday Night Raw was terrible. SmackDown Live was okay. So uh, what does it really talk about? And I do want to start reviewing NXT, so definitely be on the lookout for that. But NXT this week is just everything that happened last Saturday. So that really doesn't affect how the next weeks are going to be. So I don't want to review that. But yeah, and my NXT reviews are going to be more loose, more fun. I'm probably not going to take notes because I don't want to. Notes really become a drag and a hassle. And it kind of takes me out of some of the matches. And when NXT is a wrestling product like that... I'll, I'll simplify myself on the notes. Even though it's an hour and it probably wouldn't be that much notes to begin with. But nevertheless, I do want to start reviewing NXT 205 Live. I'm okay. I won't talk about that because uh, does anybody watch that? Let me know down below if you watch 205 Live. Because I don't. And uh, I don't know many people who do. I don't I don't remember the last episode I tuned into 205 Live. To keep it truthfully honest with you. But um... I don't know. I do got to watch that UK special. That's that's a goal of mine. I don't know if I'll get to it today. And then tomorrow I have a graduation to go to. Then Friday I got work because I work retail and it's Memorial Day weekend. So that's going to be held throughout that weekend. Next week I got work most of the days. Then I got a full-time girlfriend. <laughs> and and if you hear me talking about my girlfriend like it is a job, it's because it is. Any, anybody that's been in a long relationship knows that. But, um... All right, let's not get too carried away. Let's let's talk about Raw. As, as I said, it's going to be a short podcast, even though I'm already four minutes just talking about some nonsense and my girlfriend and why my life is so busy and I can't stand it. And also, your citizens. All right, Monday Night Raw. Now, I tuned into this late. I feel like every week I'm not watching it live and I'm not giving into the ratings, and that is probably very true because I haven't seen it live in a long time I had a what's my excuse this time what was I doing Monday might have had work no I definitely did it the hell was I doing Monday I was watching a movie yep that's my excuse I had better shit to do I was watching Get Out one of my favorite movies of the year for free anyways <laughs> um, so I'm gonna start at where I tuned in at and it was Finn Balor coming out to discuss the F- Fatal Five way. And Paul Heyman eventually interrupted him and saying everybody considers him an underdog and everybody considers him out of the competition. But 
he wished Balor luck and called him no underdog and said that, you know, Brock Lesnar is, has his eyes on you almost. Balor then cut uh, whatever promo on Brock Lesnar. His promo skills are not the best. It, it teased it teased Finn Balor being a Paul Heyman guy, and I would love that. I think Paul Heyman needs to manage more people. I think managers are a lost art in today. I, th- I feel like managers and stables are both lost arts in wrestling today. I want a dominant stable of like six people. Not even. We could just get a stable of like the New Day. I, I wish the, like a, a, like the Shield. You know what I mean? Like a serious. We could have a trio. And uh, like Jinder Mahal and his Maharajas, <laughs> the Singh brothers, like make them a stable. We haven't even seen the Singh brothers in action. At least I don't think so. Put them into the tag team division and have Jinder run the main division. I think that could work out pretty good. And uh, I, I am, I am fantasy booking SummerSlam. I'm currently writing that. Like literally, I was writing some of it today while I was on break, type working. And, um, so far, so good. I don't know how many matches I want to do, because last SummerSlam, I think, had 13, but I think the best option for this SummerSlam is to cut it on time, but you have so many championships, two world titles, two mid-card titles, two women titles, two tag team titles. If I did my math right, that is eight belts right there. Cruiserweight title, that's nine belts. Nine belts. That's a lot of championships. Nine titles, and you figure it's the biggest stage of it all. You want to defend all of those titles. How do you get away from defend not defending them? Like, it makes the title look un- incredible. It's not uncredible. I'm sorry, and um, it's not going to be defended on a big stage like SummerSlam. It's making it really difficult. Making it really difficult. Nevertheless, I am in the process of writing that as we speak, and I have ideas of stables that, you know, yeah, I'm going to talk about then, but as far as now, um, this kind of leads into what I want to talk about on Raw, and it's not a stable of, you know, the club of Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, but the group, and they faced Finn Balor, or uh, Baylor, as I forgot who said it, Booker? No. Uh, Kurt Angle. He 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 called he called Finn Balor Finn Balor, which is uh, pretty comical if you ask me, because uh, I think he should be more in tune who the guy is. But um, nevertheless, Carl Anderson faced Finn Balor without a storyline in it, just so they could do it. How did that not piss one off? I mean, I guess we should, you know, all that club stuff happened in New Japan, but they didn't throw all that out the way when AJ Styles came. That was, it it makes no sense to me. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. Why is it happening? It was a short little match that was pointless. Finn Balor won, and yeah, whatever. I'm really pissed off about it. I I would rant. I want to rant. But um, I don't want to give it my energy. It's just ridiculous, and like I, I want them to join forces and come together now. Storyline, if we're looking at it through the storyline, just a uh, random banding of them together wouldn't make sense because they fought before. Where if you just kept them away from each other, well, if they banded together, you could just oh yeah, that never happened to begin with. You know what I mean? They were just in the back then. It doesn't make sense. You have the ride-alongs with them, which I, I know kayfabe is dead. That's why I call it fucking a kayfabe is dead podcast. But still, man, this is this is fucking ridiculous. Whatever. Sasha Banks for versus Alicia Fox. More more ridiculous stuff. Uh, it was a second, third time of this happening the last three weeks. Double knees in the corner. Banks wins, and I'm here thinking, wow, fifty fifty booking. This is just trash. Or in this case, I guess, 70, what, 66 to 33% booking. Uh, what's happening here? Why are they even doing this? But um, Sasha slapped Noam, no, Noam Dar, and Alicia Fox kind of got back at her by hitting the, I forgot what she calls it, but I call it the scissor kick. It's, 
Something like that. But anyways, so it looks like they're building a feud with Sasha Banks and Alicia Fox. And I mean, sure, Alicia Fox got a win now. So build her credibility up because, you know, the Raw Women's roster could, I guess, use another credible figure. Nia Jax, Emma's gone, Sasha Banks, whatever. I don't know. I guess just to have a secondary women's feud. Just to have Sasha lose just still pissed me off. Uh, whatever. The the, for the beginning of me watching Monday Night Raw, I came in at hour nine. I'm in at hour two. It was a bad taste in my mouth. And who who would who would have known that the, the my favorite segment when I first started watching the show and this episode had to do with Titus O'Neil and Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews and Kalisa were talking in the back and Kalisa was saying like, oh man, you're not acting like yourself. I don't know what's getting into you. You really believe that this Titus is, is you really believe that the blah, 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 blah. And basically Apollo Crews was like, man, he's a brand. He's a, he's a big, he's like one of the biggest brands, blah, blah, blah. Gassed him up, obviously. And Titus came and he was like, oh, I know what you're trying to do. You want to join the Titus brand. And uh, we're, we're welcome, Latins. We don't care. We're welcome this, this, and that. It, it was kind of funny. And Kalista was like, I don't want to join you. And spoke some something in Spanish, which is bad because I'm Puerto Rican. And I didn't understand what he's saying. Nor can I interpret what he said for you. So I don't know what he said. But he said something in Spanish. And uh, this led to an Apollo Crews versus Kalista match. Now, and I, I, it was a fun segment for me. Now, their match, a, a nice match as well. It was okay, got a little bit of time. And Apollo Crews lost. Kalisto hit his Salida del Sol as Apollo Crews was kind of being distracted by Titus O'Neil in the corner. And Titus was like, sick him, sick him. Do, do your little flippity flip flopper thing. Literally, that's what he called it. Flippity floppity thing, something like that. And, um,. In the midst of the distraction, in the midst of the moment, he got distracted and Kalisto hit his finisher. I don't think Apollo Crews should have lost. I think they should have ran with this, but if they slowly built a Titus Crews, you know, a Titus Crews, Apollo Crews really winning, I like this. And once again, you can always throw him in the tag team division, which I wouldn't mind as well. We need more faces in there. I would not mind that. But this th- throws the whole uh, Apollo Crews and Kalisto tag team that I talked about against Dolph Ziggler. I thought I thought they would be a pretty good tag team, but whatever. My opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> Next up, we had Matt Hardy versus Sheamus, and the winner would pick the stipulation of the match come Extreme Rules. Now, I, I match was okay. Um, got a good amount of time, so that made it good. Matt ducked under a bro kick, and well, uh, what am I? I don't know what I'm trying to get at. Matt ducks on. I, I wrote this in my notes. Matt ducks under bro kick. So, what, what? I don't know. Matt ducks under bro kick. Jeff takes out Cesaro. A twist of fate, and the Hardys win. Maybe that's just how it happened. I don't, I, I don't know. Whatever. And the Hardys win, and the stipulation. I'm glad they didn't pick a ladder match, believe it or not. Ladder match will come money in the bank. I, we don't need to see a Jeff, Matt, and Matt Hardy in the ladder match every single time. Don't play out the concept. And they're going in a steel cage match, which I like. I enjoy. So I, I haven't seen a steel cage match in a long time, I feel like. I'm gassing it. I'm sure they had one and the whole gimmick was to keep them out of it or keep people out. I don't remember it, though. It's probably a ballad. Re- I think it was Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns. That was the last steel cage match. But, like, this this is not a steel cage. I haven't seen a tag team steel cage match in a very long time. Thinking about it now, I don't. I can't remember one off the top of my head, to be honest. So, you know what? That's a good thing. And I, I'm excited for it, to be honest, because Matt and Jeff Hardy are still very much fun to me. And heel Cesaro and heel Sheamus are great right now. Austin Aries versus Tony Nese. Aries submits him with the last chance three. Then, you know, Neville breaks from the commentary table, puts him in the rings of Saturn, and yeah, there, there it goes. He kind of, he put him in the ring of Saturn and looked at Austin Aries kind of saying like, I can do this too. Whatever you can do, I can do better. I like this. 
What I don't like is I I also thought Neville and Tony Nese would be a cool tag team because they're just like small, brolic, look good together. They almost look alike. Tony Nese looks like the American version of Adrian Neville. But anyways, yeah, it kind of ruins the future tag team. <laughs> well, good stuff though. Mickey James versus Alexa Bliss. Bliss ended up winning with a DDT, and then she goes for the kendo stick, uses it on Mickey like once I think. Then Bailey runs out, gets a hold of the kendo stick, and Alexa Bliss runs away. So it's kind of showing like Bailey does have a little, you know, extreme side to her. She doesn't use it though, so I guess they're teasing that, and we're gonna have to wait till Extreme Rules to get that. Is Extreme Rules next Sunday? Not this Sunday. Next Sunday, it might be. I might not even be in town. I probably have to watch that on delay too. God damn it! Hopefully, I don't run into spoilers then. What else we had? We had. Um. All right, well, that's the last. Actually, I'm lying. Oh, and then we had the main event after that. But I'm gonna talk about the main event differently than I usually do. So then, um, I eventually watched the beginning of the show, and I caught up, and it started with Bray Wyatt. Coming out, cutting a very good promo. A great promo, but it was Bray Wyatt, so I can't really tell you what he was saying. So, take that. But it was a good promo. It sounded good. It looked good. He kept saying for people to stand up. So, I don't know. It did something for me, though. I liked it. I enjoyed it, even though I don't know what the hell he was saying, because he was all, like, in (laughs) subliminal and... I don't know, it's like a different language when he speaks, but nevertheless, uh, Samoa, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead, Roman comes out, and Angle makes Bray vs. Roman for the first match of the day, it was a pretty okay match, but it only happened like for four minutes and Samoa Joe came out, and yeah, this kind of led to a main event being Bray Wyatt and Samoa Joe vs. Rollins and Reigns. So a coquina clutch on Rollins after Reigns ran over him. He accidentally, like, he was going for the Superman punch on Samoa Joe. And Samoa Joe ducked out the way. And, you know, he couldn't stop his momentum. He ran over Rollins. And he got put, and Rollins got put into a coquina clutch. And Rollins passes out. So they lose. And announced for next week, Balor versus Wyatt versus Samoa Joe. And Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns. So, this Monday Night Raw had nothing going for it except Apollo Crews, which I enjoyed. And, um, yeah. Actually, they had one more thing Elias Samson, Samson versus Dean Ambrose, the drifter. Elias Samson draws instant heat. And he had, a, he had a sick knee while Dean went for like that elbow that he does when the opponent is standing up. Eventually, Miz comes down, hits Elias, so Elias could win, and Dean is disqualified. Kind of, kind of continuing the tone of Dean can't help but get disqualified. And I enjoyed this a lot. I think Elias Samson looked pretty good in his debut. I thought it was creative. I enjoyed it. And it was another bright spot of Monday Night Raw. But next week, thankfully, we got Balor versus Wyatt versus Joe and Rollins versus Reigns. So we got some hope for next week. So let's hope for that one and pray. Oh, and Enzo is basically found dead. In the in, A lot happened, but nothing happened. Enzo was dead. He woke up. Uh, yeah, um, somebody attacked him. Maybe it's Cass. Early prediction, Cass. See the Cass or maybe like a member from the revival. I have no idea. SmackDown Live. A better show than Monday Night Raw. Go figure. Was it a great show? No, it was pretty good though. It opens with a police escort and Jinder Mahal coming out of a limousine. And Shane came out in the actual arena. That was outside the arena. Shane came out and announced the Money in the Bank match. He also announced that Jinder Mahal and Randy Orton will happen on Money in the Bank for their rematch. So that's interesting. Uh, I don't know if I want to see that match again, but it's okay. But the Money in the Bank match itself, he called these people out and they came as the order, I'm going to say. AJ Styles, 
Baron Corbin, Sami Zayn, Dolph Ziggler, Kevin Owens, but Kevin Owens was not in the match. He kind of, Shane's like, like Shane, Shane expressed, he's like, Kevin, you know you're not in this match. I didn't tell you you were. Leave. Then Shinsuke came out. Apparently, it was going to be five participants. And Kevin Owens was like, hold up, hold up, hold up. Sammy won his match. Okay, he, that makes sense. Um, Shinsuke won his match. That makes sense. All these other people lost. I won. Why am I not in this match? And then Shane was like, wow, logic. That makes sense. You know what, Kevin Owens, you're right. You're in this match. It was stupid. That was stupid. Nevertheless, this is looking stacked. Kevin Owens, AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura, Sami Zayn, Dolph Ziggler, those are all wrestlers, wrestlers. They're the top of the top, the cream of the crop. Baron Corbin, he's good. I mean, he's, he's the one dominant guy, which, you know, for the most time it was Kane or it was Big Show or Mark Henry. So we got Baron Corbin. I'm cool with that because I'd rather him than all of them. But wow, this is stacked main. Uh, not main, It's not going to be a main event. It's stacked Money in the Bank match. So now, what would you say I would do? You're losing all your mid-card talent. Make this match 45 minutes long. 40 minutes long. The Elimination Chamber, obviously, the Elimination Chamber should be longer. But um, that was a long match, and it was a great match. Survivor Series, last year, 2016, it felt like an hour long. Make it like that type of length match and make it very, very goddamn competitive. And how I would book that? Find out on the next episode of Kayfabe is Dead podcast because I will have it. I try to do like a Dragon Ball Z reference, but uh, nevertheless. Um, now, who else do you put on this card is my question. You have this match. You defend the U.S. title. Oh, you can't defend the U.S. title. You have the women's title match, which I would do a Money in the Bank match. I hope, you know, the Fatal Five way that Shane announced for next week. I hope that winner gets his title shot, you know, the next day and it's a screwy finish or something because I think it should be um, a, 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 a Money in the Bank women's match. Go for it all. That Right there, you get the crowd's money. You, you're giving the fans their money's worth. Then you have the Randy. So that's three matches right there. What other matches could you have with this roster? That slim pickings. You could have a tag team match that makes four. So now you got to find at least one more match. Do you throw Harper in the mix? You have Harper o Rowan again. That's going to be terrible. Um, I don't know what you could do. I say build a story with Ty Dillinger, man. That isn't against Aiden English. Have something going, because Ty could actually perform. I think Ty should be in a feud with Dolph Ziggler. But, I mean, if that contestant is booked up, then uh, I can't think of anybody in the roster right now. Their mid-carders are so bad. So bad. Can't think of anybody right now, but Ty Dillinger. Do something with him. <laughs> but, nevertheless, Money in the Bank, just for that match alone, I'm very excited. Now off to the women's, I, I did mention something that happened in the women's division, but Carmella and Natalia are facing off against Becky and Charlotte. The commercials were on the screen at the same time as the match, which I enjoyed. I, I, two things coming at once, we don't, we, you know, I like seeing what happens when the match is going on and it's on commercial. Like, that's something that kind of intrigues me, to be honest. Huh. Excuse me. But, um... Becky makes Carmella tap and the, and the disarm her. What can I say? It was a tag team match. Whatever. Baron Corbin versus Sami Zayn. Sami got a roll up in like a minute, if not less. Corbin wasn't happy. Completely destroyed Sami Zayn. Used a steel chair. Fought him in the crowd. Well, didn't really fight him in the crowd, but destroyed him in the crowd. Put his head on the barricade and... Delivered forearms and or elbows or something. He was completely mauling the guy. And yeah, so I I like this. I actually like the roll-ups and I liked it so much that I didn't mind the other ones that happened in the same in the same day. We had a fashion files and the fashion police try to like hang it up and call it a career almost. And Shane Mc, you know, they're talking to the the commissioner and they're like, you know, 
Usos just had way more H than us because it's playing. It was they're just great, man. They're really they're good talkers. And Shane McMahon said, "All right, well, Fandango, you'll face one of the Usos. Breeze, you'll face the other. All right, sound good." So Tyler Breeze faced one of the Usos. I'm pretty sure it was Jay. And Fandango distracted. I think it was. It was. I think it was Jay with a water gun, and he and he sprayed sprayed him in the face. And a, another quick quick roll up. One two three. Tyler Breeze won. Fandango faced the other Uso, who I think it was Jimmy. If I have my calculations right, if, if Jay already had a match, then it had to be Jimmy. Um, and literally Tyler Breeze like ran around. I think he was running. I think he was Jay was chasing him. So many Usos. Hard to get them confused. Uh, they look exactly alike. Um, but yeah, I think Jay was... Whoever the hell it was. Uh, some chase was happening. I don't know why I'm going into such a deep discussion about the whole situation. How do you guys tell the Usos apart? How does Naomi do it? Which one is she dating? Rakishi, how does he do it? How does Roman do it? How does their family do it? I don't know. How do the referees do it? Or maybe they don't. What if they're... Just like, I don't know, they, they just keep switching personas. And we don't even know. I wonder if Jay ever played Jimmy one day. Like he was sick or something. I don't know, questions that need to be answered. Anyways, um, the other Uso lost by a roll-up real quick too. And the fashion police were basically like, hey, we want another championship shot. And Uso's, because, you know, they're credible and they're good champions, they said, F it, we'll do it right now. And the referee, like, went to the... Or the ring beller, <laughs> the bell ringer, whatever they're called, timekeeper, went to the timekeeper area and basically had a conversation with, I'm guessing, Shane McMahon. And he said, all right, he confirmed the match and they had it. And it was a pretty quick but fun, solid match. Um, super kicks on both Fandango and Breeze. Fandango, re- super kick on both Fandango and Breeze. That was a nice spot. Fandango reversed the Uso splash into a very close near fall. He hits the last dance on one of the Usos, but he misses that they actually made a tag, and he got Uso splashed on. So, good match. I hope the run for Fashion Police isn't over, because they're over. They're over the crowd. They're over our... They're over... Oh my... I can't fucking talk. I'm only 27 minutes in the podcast. I'm gonna just stop it right there. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Uh, you can follow. <laughs> I'm kidding, but yeah, they're over on the crowd, and they gotta get more chances. Tyler Breeze is great. Fandango is great. The gimmick is awesome. A New Day storyline who did return and talking smack out of all things, but nevertheless, it it was great. It would be great. I, I'm excited for this tag team division now. But what I hate is why is American Alpha missing? Just because one tag team is rising doesn't mean that another tag team has to be stalling. They're doing absolutely nothing. Get them doing something. Thank you. Next up, we had the big Punjabi... Punjab... Punjab... Oh my god. I'm cluttered today. I'm clustered. Uh, Punjabi... Punjabi... Holy shit. Punjabi... 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 Punjabi. Punjabi. Whatever. The celebration for Jinder Mahal. He had a big drum-like entrance. And it was pyros everywhere. It was crazy. It was epic. It made the title feel very, very special. I give it that. Jinder's promo was whatever. But everything felt special. I don't like Jinder's character right now. His character work is okay. But the character itself is... Why do these heels always have to be, you don't like me because I'm different and it's such a, I hate it. I hate the foreigner gimmick. Hate it every time. Nevertheless, it made the title feel special. So that gets a, it's in my good grace just for that alone. But for the main event, we had Kevin Owens and Dolph Ziggler versus AJ Styles and Nakamura. And at this point in the in the day, in the when I was watching, I was like, "Wow, AJ Styles and Nakamura are really in the same ring. This is incredible." And then I realized, K 
Kevin Owens and AJ's and Nakamura are in the same ring. What a good time to be a wrestling fan, even though the product is absolute dog shit. But just in hopes that we could get these matches, he's on the right brand, I can tell you that much. He's on the Fantasy Booker's brand. But it, it was just unreal. You know what is real, though? Nakamura got dominated this whole match. He was the. I hate this format of tag team matches. Starts off pretty neutral. Somebody gets dominated. Well, most likely the face. It's the, the face gets dominated. Hot tag. Destruction. Then everybody's final spots. Headlock. <laughs> uh, that's uh, something that happened on in Twitter with Randy Orton. If you guys don't know about that, I'm, I'm not going to explain it now. But that's how it is. It's a format of a tag team match. And I'm not really a fan of that. That's why I love NXT tag team matches so much. It's it's a little different, I feel like. Nevertheless, Nakamura got dominated. And he ended up hitting the Kinshasa on Kevin Owens. So they won the match. Everything is fine and dandy. AJ Styles and Nakamura in the same ring to close the show. So kind of unreal. In 2017, we got AJ Styles and Nakamura closing out a show on WWE. Whatever. It was a good episode of SmackDown Live. Bad episode for Monday Night Raw. Whatever week for wrestling. I wasn't really hyped for either or. Just not much to talk about. I really debated on even if I wanted to do this podcast. Because it's so unnewsworthy and nothing. That's why I knew I had I had to give something. I had to, That's why I have my list and I'll probably do this for like 10 minutes. <clears throat> So it is in honor of Jinder Mahal winning the championship where he was a guy who we never thought would win a major WWE championship. I have nine other people that we don't think will win a WWE championship, but they should. They should win that world title, even though they won't. At least I don't think they will. Hopefully they do get a chance in the future. So at number one, I have nine. Ironically, his number is 10. It's Ty Dillinger. Now, Ty Dillinger just got called up, but he is already old. And I feel like I already gave him a shout out earlier. Ty Dillinger is awesome. He's a perfect 10, even though he's number one on this list. And I feel like the story he could have, like I I already, I kind of fantasy booked on an earlier episode, like... What I would have is, I would have had him be like the number, just to give you an idea, would have had him be the number one contender for the world, the WWE title, winning it in like, you know, a contender title match or whatever the case is, the Fatal Five Way, however they want to do it, and have him win the match and kind of they book it as, yo, like Ty, like you never reach that, that brass ring in NXT how do you expect to do it here? Like, if you couldn't do it over there, and that's just, like, our understudy, what does that make you now? Like, you know what I mean? And build it like that, and he's just gonna be carried by the fans, and it'll just be great. Imagine him winning the championship in a 10, 10, 10. It's just epic, and I think he's perfect. He's perfect to win a Money in the Bank in the near future. But make that future near, please. He's Zack Ryder, except hasn't got to the Zack Ryder point yet. Or actually, like, WWE knows he's Zack Ryder and it didn't have to be forced to us, if you know what I mean. But um, I think that's, that's I think he'll be great and it'll be a great underdog st- story. Luke Harper. Uh, he got immense talent. More talent than Bray Wyatt, in my opinion. Let me take a drink out of my drink. But uh, more talent than Bray Wyatt in the ring, at least. And I feel like he's a big man. He can move underrated, I feel like he should be one day, I don't think this is ever going to happen, by the way, never, but I feel like he has the talent to be the WWE Championship, especially on the SmackDown brand where it is, you know, the one looked at with a little bit less eyes, at least by the WWE, I, I, I would enjoy it, and this is just me as a wrestling fan. And I think all wrestling fans would say that we want Luke Harper to get a main push. 
And he almost had it. Like, honestly, if they would have had a triple threat match at WrestleMania, I wouldn't have minded, you know, if it was Luke Harper, Randy Orton, and Bray Wyatt, I wouldn't have minded them going on and doing Luke Harper. Just my opinion, though. Just my opinion. Next one might be controversial because he already won the championship. But I just don't think he'll ever get it again. The Miz. He's been on a killing streak for the past year and some change. His character work been absolutely great. He's been one he was one of my favorite things on SmackDown. And, you know, I think when he wins the title, come extreme rules, because he is, he'll be one of my favorite things on Raw. Him and Maurice are iron, they're hot as an iron. And I think I don't know, I, I wanna see him with the big title again. I didn't I hated him before. Hated him as a WWE champion, but now I want to see it done right. I think he's a great heel because people boo him, but people at the same time respect him and enjoy his work. So, Miz, put him on the list. Jason Jordan. I wanted to put any member of American Alpha here, but just Jason Jordan because, one, he's African-American, and we haven't got too many African-Americans WWE champions. Booker T. I mean, I, I, Booker T wasn't even the WWE champion. But one, he's African American who can truly wrestle. Incredible. He's great. He can cut a promo, contrary to what you see on SmackDown Live. I, I, Chad, throw Chad Gable in the mix too. Fuck it. Um, either one of them. They're both awesome. Chad Gable is also a lot smaller, so it kind of it's it'll be harder for him, but. Jason Jordan has immense talent. Once again, I'm using that word. And such potential. Him and Chad Gable. Give one of them the title in the future. They're both... How old is Jason Jordan? He gotta be in his young 20s. Please be in your young 20s. Give me a second as I type. Jason Jordan. He is 28. So it's young enough. He's one of the younger people. And Chad Gable is... 31, so he's, he's a little older. But nevertheless, I would appreciate both of them getting a main title in the future. I think they got some years to go, but I think that they should get it. And I think they, out of all people on my list that I named so far, Jason Jordan definitely has the highest chance. Jason Jordan and The Miz. Because Jason Jordan in the future, I think they see their talent in him. And he should definitely get it. Next, another person in the tag team right now. Jeff Hardy. I want to see him with the big belt one more time. He was great with it before. He'll be great with it now. I like him as a solo act better than a tag team act, to be honest. I think he's a great wrestler. He's I, I don't remember much of his promos, but it's, it's Jeff Hardy, man. He's one of my favorites of all time. I want to see him just off nostalgia. This, the feud he had with CM Punk was amazing. Umaga, amazing. Yeah, Triple H, it was just or Edge. I, I want to see it again. I definitely want to see it again, and I want to see him grab that world title. Grab that brass ring one more time. If he was in the money in the bank, I, like, I, I wouldn't mind seeing him win it, like, and do it like Rob Van Dam did it. And Rob Van Dam put it in, like, his... His home in ECW, I wouldn't mind him saying, I want it in a ladder match. Like, I, I just keep... It'll be awesome. I want to see Jeff Hardy get it one more time. Last tag team, I promise. If Unless you consider the last guy. I don't, I don't consider the last guy a tag team. but One of the New Day members. Why? I'll tell you why on my next episode of Kayfabe is Dead podcast. Because I got some plans for them. Come SummerSlam. But yeah, either one of them. Kofi, Xavier Woods, Big E. Predominantly Big E because he's the more believable, you know, world champion. Just the way he looks is dominant. He got uh, just incredible physique and incredible powerful moveset. So I feel like he'll be the more... Uh, you know, if you look at him, you can see the world champion in him. And... I think that if one of them should get it, it should be him. Especially because Kofi's time is due and Xavier Woods isn't the best wrestler. So uh, Big E has the charisma as well as having the look as well as having the talent. 
So I say big yeah to them. And I'll explain that next podcast, I promise you. And it's some good shit. Next, one that I am pushing for because I thought he was going, like as soon as I seen him in NXT for the first time, I thought he had the most talent in the world. I saw this guy in NXT and I was like, wow, this is going to be the future right here. I seen it all in him. I didn't, I saw Kevin Owens and I was like, no, 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 but this guy right here, it's him. It's him, it's him, it's him. I see it in him. He got the look. He got the move set. It's, it's him. It gotta be him. They're pushing him crazy. It's Adrian Neville. Neville, however you want to call him. He's a damn good heel. His physique is out the roof. He's an extremely talented wrestler. Man, I, I saw such future in him at NXT, and I was so mad because it was being wasted. And now he is a cruiserweight champion, and he's doing a phenomenal job, but we can only have Austin Aries versus Adrian Neville for so long, and I'm getting tired of it, and I'm getting tired of the So 205 Live, and I love the UK wrestling. I don't know why I said I love the UK wrestling, but it, it is great right now. So shout out shout out to Tyler Bate, shout out to Pete Dunn, because they put on a phenomenal match. But I hate 205 Live. I hate it. I hate every segment that is 205 Live on Monday Night Raw. They really dropped the ball. I was very excited to hear it was coming. and Just disappointment. With all that being said, Neville is awesome. If you haven't seen enough of him on WWE, which I wouldn't really blame you, watch his NXT matches. With Tyson Kidd, with Tyler Breeze, with the both of them together, with Sami Zayn, he's truly phenomenal. I want to go watch some Adrian Neville right now. I'll probably end up watching Shinsuke versus Sami today because I want to show my friend the match, but anyways, uh, Neville, he's the real deal, the real deal, I remember watching one of the takeover matches, I think it was the triple threat, or fatal four-way, with all of them, holy god, man, those matches was incredible, incredible, Neville, you're great, keep up the good work, this next one out of everybody I mentioned, I think has the greatest chance of one day being a world champion, I, I didn't want to put Sami Zayn because I think he'll he'll reach it eventually. I didn't want to put Cesaro because I feel like he's the obvious answer. It's Rusev, my next pick. I like Rusev. I think we all love Handsome Ruru. And I think we need more of Handsome Ruru. And I think we will get more of Handsome Ruru in the future. I don't think I have to explain this case. I think it's already explained for us. He had a great United States title run. He made the title... Feels so credible. He was a great heel. I think he could be a great face. And either way, I feel like Rusev is going to be on the path to success. And I hopefully, and 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 I hope he doesn't get thrown off that path. It almost looked like he was before he was going to get injured. Before he got injured, I'm sorry. But now that he's on SmackDown, I feel like he could be a very big asset, and we could just hear him pop up. I mean, he already called for the title shot. And I feel like we can hear him pop up and almost not even question it in the future that, wow, yeah, he absolutely deserves to be there. The next one, my last one, number nine. <laughs> uh, now, I put him down only for storyline purpose. I feel like it makes sense. And it would be a great feel-good moment just like Ty Dillinger. Zack Ryder. I feel like if you would have him win the Money in the Bank and uh, Money in the Bank match, and you, it just it's for Zack Ryder, it's always been like he won the IC title, and I was like, wow, I never expect him to win, and it just felt great. And I wasn't even I wasn't even watching when he rose back in 2011 or 2012, and it just felt great watching it in 2015, 2016, 2016. It, it felt it felt awesome. So I feel like, wow, he the kid did it. He won the U.S. belt. Wow, even though he didn't really have a great run with it. he Wow, the kid did it. He won the, U, uh, the Intercontinental belt. Finish it with the wow, the kid did it. He won the biggest belt ever. It would be such an emotional, heartfelt story with a beautiful ending to it. And I feel like he deserves that. 
not not like he put in like a whole bunch of work for the company, even though he has. He he has done his fair due of due of change, but he was the he was the first of something rare and it was you know, a fan being liked on the internet community and being pushed because he was popular due to the internet community. You know, we did we ended up getting the CM Punks, the Daniel Bryans. That all came after him. I feel like Zack Ryder, it would just be a beautiful ending to you know, what, what what's this thing's called? Z the uh, I I don't want to disrespect my man Zack Ryder. Let me, let me see if I can find it real quick. Ah, uh, come on, hurry up, internet! Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up! Um, damn it! Why can't I find it now? You know he got a show on it's on WWE. It's called Z. I don't. I can, maybe it's not on there yet. But anyways, the comeback kid, the Long Island kid, whatever it is, I, I want I want it to be Zack Ryder. That's my ninth pick. That's my last pick. Tell me got tell me what do you guys think of it? Do you guys have any suggestions to other people? I really can't think of any other people. Besides like the Zami Zay and Cesaro and all that. I think it I think this is a solid list. And again, next week, I'm excited for it, even though I haven't finished it and I just started today. My SummerSlam card. I, I wanna have Jesse or Will here, one of the people that were on the last podcast, just so they I can get their response and I can get that. Wow, like yeah, that that's a great idea. Like I, I wanna I wanna feel that um wanna feel that energy. And I and I think that if I say it and they're here or just as an audience in general, they'll be like, Wow, like the way your mind works. Cause I, I really think I have something going when I start writing down storylines and ideas for these matches. But SummerSlam, I'm going to fantasy book the shit out of you. So uh, be ready, guys, and stay in tune. Please, please, please. You guys did an awesome job at watching my WrestleMania review. My Not my WrestleMania review, my WrestleMania Dream Card Episode 6. So if you guys want to get a taste of what this episode of my SummerSlam booking is going to be, check out Episode 6. Thank you guys for listening. Oh, and I'm going to book SummerSlam based off of what happens next week. Anyways, thank you guys for listening. I appreciate it as always. You can find us on SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, under the name, all of the above, E-N-T. Subscribe, follow, rate us if it's on iTunes, like, share, subscribe, all that good shit. Thank you for the support. We got other podcasts you can listen to if you're into MMA or UFC. We got a music one coming very, very soon. Hip-hop, mostly. But um, thank you guys once again. The Maharaja is said and done. I spoke my piece. Why did I do a kiss? I, uh, you know how they, uh, that that was, that was almost Velveteen dream, dream status. We're gonna ignore that, guys. I hope you're already not listening. Thank you. Bye.